we had discussed a variety of oscillators so far. RC oscillators, under this category, we had discussed wind bridge oscillator, phase shift oscillator. The LC oscillators, under this category, we had discussed uh, Hartley Colpitts oscillator okay, and also Gairata simulated oscillators. And crystal oscillator, we just mentioned at the end of the last class that the crystal can replace an LC circuit because basically a crystal is a combination of series resonance and parallel resonance circuit actually represented so this crystal has an inductor in series with the capacitor and a small resistance and then shunt with of course, this is not wantonly put, this is going to be the uh, electrode capacitance here, right? So, and also the state capacitance. It has a series capa a resistance and a series capacitance and an inductance. And therefore, at the series resonance frequency is omega naught is equal to 1 over root L s C s that is the series resonance frequency and the parallel resonance frequency is omega naught is equal to 1 over root L across L you have C s coming in series with C shan. So, C s C shan okay, we will put down this elsewhere. This is series resonance, this is parallel resonance, 1 over root of L C s C shunt divided by C s plus C shunt. They are coming in series. So, effective capacitance is that. That is the parallel resonance circuit. parallel resonance. It can be seen that this is very nearly equal to 1 over root L s C s primarily because you can take this out the root of 1 by 1 plus C s by C shan. this L s C s you take out then divide by C shunt okay. because this factor is going to very small value right. That means actually if you put additional C shunt it is closer right to the actual that means basically this ratio is very small compared to 1 by structure okay. So, additional C shunt will again make it closer to this series resonance. So, this fact has made this very popular because you can get a wide where range. For example, when it is in series resonance, it is a short circuit basically. That means, actually it is a small resistance okay, in series that is R s. Okay. And a parallel resonance, it is going to be an open circuit. That means, a huge resistance value okay which is q squared times r s right basically the quality of this is very high so it's an open circuit so the impedance level can go from short circuit to open circuit around a small change in frequency that small change in frequency depends upon this deviation here okay so you can see that this is a very versatile circuit which will act as capacitive or inductive or short circuit or open circuit around the same frequency. This is an important property in what we call now as frequency stability in oscillators. Let us understand this basic concept. Why? What is frequency stability? The frequency of oscillation in all these oscillators, for example, in RC oscillators is determined by uh, the resistance and the capacitance this way 
omega naught is invariably equal to k by R C. You need a minimum of two R C networks, two time constant, in order to make any oscillator. Not single with single time constant, you cannot make a harmonic oscillator because second order is the basic requirement of second order differential equation. So two. That means basically this is going to be some k divided by root of some R one, R two, C one, C two. For any oscillator, k differing depending upon the type of oscillator. Okay. That means sensitivity of omega naught to R one, R two, C one, C two. They are all same. Okay. Sensitivity in this case is equal to half. What is sensitivity? Sensitivity is defined as omega naught to R one is defined as delta omega naught by omega naught for delta R one by R one. Okay. This is the definition of sensitivity. What is the change, percentage change in frequency for a change in the component value? That is defined as sensitivity. Okay, percentage change in the frequency for percentage change in the component value. That is defined as the sensitivity of omega naught to R one. Similarly, sensitivity of omega naught to R two. Okay, this R two will come here, delta R two by R two. Now, this one, if you determine for this, will be equal to Minus half for all these components. Okay, that is because there is a root coming. Okay, so you will see that sensitivity is going to be minus because it is coming in the denominator. Okay, so whenever anything comes in the denominator, we have negative coming. That when that component increases, this other uh, parameter decreases. Right, that is indicating negative, and it is half. You can see this. Therefore. The sensitivity of passive component here for LC oscillators is also the same half minus half L and C. So it's the same R one, R two, C one, C two. Okay, L, C. So these are all. So sensitivity to passive components remains the same in all these cases. Okay, L S and C S also is half, except that for C shunt it is. Not sensitive at all. This you can see, right? For sensitivity of omega naught for C shunt is very nearly zero, right? So <coughs> I am discussing this passive parameter sensitivity in order to illustrate that apart from this passive parameter sensitivity, it is bound to be sensitive. Okay? There is no way. Avoiding it. What it means is, if resistance varies with respect to time, temperature, etc., the frequency is going to drift. But therefore, we'll make sure that these resistances are chosen in such a manner that there is no drift in the frequency of oscillation because they are pretty sensitive to these variations. Right. So passive parameters are made stable in their value. They are selected in such a manner that these values. Don't change with temperature or time, so that the frequency doesn't change with temperature or time. That is one aspect of frequency stability. Whether it is R C oscillator or L C oscillator, the performance is the same in terms of passive parameter sensitivity. See, what it means is, if I am designing a uh, LC oscillator, right, the capacitor I put should be more dominant than the parasitic capacitor, okay, so that the frequency stability of my circuit is good. Or the inductor I put, okay, in my design should be greater than any lead inductance in order that the stability of oscillator is good. So this is illustrated in the crystal situation also. The parasitic normally comes as a shunt capacitor, and the sensitivity to shunt capacitor should be very low. That is one aspect. Next aspect is, this is different, active parameter sensitivity.
In realizing these oscillators, we had used op amps, okay, transistors, etc. What is active parameter sensitivity? It is the same thing. Is omega not sensitive to, let us say, the uh, parameter, active parameter of the device that you are using? Let us say beta of the transistor, for example, one active parameter is beta of the transistor all right, okay, or g m of the transistor. These are all active parameters. Okay. In the case of operating, these are for the transistors, FET and this thing. For uh, And also input resistance, output resistance, these are all okay, the parameters which will influence okay, the uh, in fact, I should not put input resistance, I should put as input impedance, okay? output impedance. These are parameters which will affect the performance of the oscillators. Similarly, in the case of uh, op amp A naught, open loop gain, okay? and actually A naught also depends upon frequency. Let us say this is called the bandwidth let us say dominant pole. We will discuss this later. It has a frequency dependence. The gain has a frequency dependence. So, it is frequency dependence. Again input impedance, output impedance. These are the parameters which are responsible for changing this. If the frequency is dependent upon these parameters, then these parameters in turn will depend upon supply voltage, temperature okay, and the device itself. When I change the device, this may change because these properties are different for the other device. So, the stability of such oscillator which is designed using these components is now poor. If the dependence is heavy. If the dependence is not so heavy, the stability is good. Now, how does stability come into picture in oscillators? This part we will discuss now. In any oscillator, we have seen that we have discussed it in terms of two things. One is the loop gain. This is the loop gain. Okay. The loop gain becomes equal to 1. This is both in phase as well as magnitude, right? That is, there is no phase, okay, zero phase, and the magnitude becomes equal to one at a certain frequency omega, equal to omega naught. Then it oscillates. This is what we have shown. At that frequency, it oscillates. This is the basic principle. Now let us consider this. I am for illustration taking Wien bridge oscillator so that you can understand this clearly. We had put here resistances, let us say Ra and Rb. The gain was 1 plus Rb by Ra. And we had put here resistors. Okay, in fact, uh, it could be just R one C one, R two C two. Right? You remember this? Then we had closed this loop. So, this was our wind bridge oscillator and we had got some condition for oscillation etcetera. We again uh, derive that 1 plus if this is V i, we just said this is 1 plus I break this loop here. This is V i, this is 1 plus R b by R a times V i. Okay. That multiplied by this is how we had derived. Let us say Z1 by Z1 plus Z2 is the voltage here 
and I divide it by z1, 1 plus z2 y1 it became and then we consider this as z2 is r2 plus 1 by sc2 and z1 is 1 over r1 plus sc1 and we just wrote this as 1 plus rb by ra okay, vi by 1 plus r2 by r1 c1 by c2 plus 1 over sc2 r1 plus sc1 r2. This was frequency dependent okay, and this was I brought out the j here let us say this became minus omega and this became plus omega. So, essentially we had this going to 0 at omega naught equal to 1 over c 1 c 2 r 1 r 2. This was vanishing and we made r b by r a that was the condition for oscillation equal to r 2 by r 1 plus c 1 by c 2. You remember this and we made it all equal r b by r a equal to okay, r 2 by r 1 equal to 1, c 1 by c 2 equal to 1, r b by r a equal to 2 when r 1 equals to r 2, c 1 equal to c 2. This was r, this was c and therefore this was omega naught squared, this was c squared r squared. So, omega naught was 1 over c r. This I am just repeating for completion sake. Now, what is active parameter sensitivity? Passive, passive parameter sensitivity is clear. What is active parameter sensitivity? The gain here is finite, let us say A. If that is the case, it is not infinite. I am considering only one aspect here. The gain is not infinite. We are not considering input impedance output impedance. That will further add to our trouble, right? Because output impedance will add in series with R2, okay? And input impedance will add in shunt with Ra. So, definitely if input impedance and output impedance become comparable to Ra and R2, right? It is going to cause stability problems. In, the, in this case, we will not consider that. We will consider only the gain aspect and show. Okay? So, if this is A, we had earlier derived that the gain is not this. Okay? The gain is A divided by 1 plus A into R1 Ra by Ra plus Rp. Do you remember this? For the non-inverting amplifier, we had derived this gain when it is not infinite, a by 1 plus a into beta, beta being r a by r a plus r b. So, actually speaking, we will divide it by a beta throughout. So, the gain is really 1 plus r b by r a, which is correct, divided by 1 plus 1 over a beta. A beta is considered as the loop gain for this. right? So, the loop gain a into beta. It can be rewritten this way. That is the error. Okay, it will, if a is real and equal to a naught, there is no problem. It is less than 1 plus r b by a r a by certain amount. I have to make r b by r a slightly higher than 1. Okay? Still, frequency stability is not going to be disturbed. Is this clear? If A is real, this will be simply A naught and this whole factor has to be made equal to let us say 2. Uh, that is uh, this whole factor has to be made equal to 1. Okay? R, R by, by R A should be close to 2, but slightly higher than 2. That is all that has to be done. So, uh, so, this whole factor should be made equal to 1 plus let us say R2 by R1 plus C1 by C2. Okay? This is the condition. And therefore, if A0 is not infinite, 
there is no problem of satisfying this condition. It is not coming into picture in the frequency of oscillation, nothing comes into picture as far as A naught is concerned. But if A naught is also frequency dependent, then there is a problem. Let us say A naught, A is frequency dependent and it is A naught by 1 plus S by omega d as we have put. If this amplifier gain is frequency dependent, then we will see that this A naught divided by n plus d. Now, this is not the case, this is not the real part at all, because this is also contributing to phase shift. Do you see that? That means, this was purely real from here to here, earlier it was purely real, either it was 1 plus R b by R a or 1 plus R b by R a divided by 1 plus 1 over loop gain, okay, as long as the loop gain was real. But now the loop gain is contributing to a phase shift. The whole thing therefore, okay, says that the output is not exactly in phase with input. This is not an exact non-inverting amplifier, there is an error. To that extent, earlier from here to here the phase was 0 and therefore, at the frequency omega naught, we could just make the phase equal to 0 for this network also. So, it was oscillating with output being equal to input or loop gain being equal to 1. So, I could close this exactly, but now what happens? Let us say there is a phase error, phase lag of 1 radian. I mean, I am just giving it an, as an example. At the frequency of interest to me, it is giving as much phase shift as 1 radian, let us say. That depends upon the omega d. 1 radian. Then the frequency at which I should select this network is not omega naught any longer, it should be deviating from omega naught that such that it will give a phase lead of 1 radian. So, the phase shift of this should be such that it will give you a phase lead, that means it will be different from omega naught. How much it is going to be different? is going to depend upon this phase shift here. right? So, we have to study the phase variation of this network, passive network z 1 by z 1 plus z 2 in order to say how much it should be different from omega naught in order to give a phase contribution of 1 radian, okay, phase lead. So, that the phase lag there by the active device is compensated for by the phase lead here. Suppose at I compensate okay, at certain frequency and for 1 degree it gives you the frequency of oscillation slightly different from omega naught, okay, so as to give a phase lead of 1 degree. Next it will change to 1.5 degrees because of temperature variation, then this will change correspondingly to a phase lead of 1.5, that means the frequency has to change again. So, now you see how frequency of oscillation of this wind bridge oscillator is directly dependent upon okay, the frequency that is variation and the phase variation with respect to frequency here. So, let us plot the phase variation of this network with frequency. If you plot that, you can <coughs> see that this part of the network gives you this kind of thing 1 plus 1 R 2 over R 1 C 1 over C 2 plus J okay, into omega C 1 R 2 minus omega C 2 R 1. This is the expression. Okay. R 2 is equal to R 1 nominally, so we will consider the nominal values. Okay. R 2 is always made equal to R 1, so this is equal to 3. Okay. So, this is C, this is R, this is the condition. You will see that at omega equal to 1 over C R, at omega equal to 1 over C R, this phase is 0, it is just 1 over 3. 
So at omega equal to 1 over C r, which we are calling as omega naught. Okay? This is not the actual frequency of oscillation. Okay? This is the theoretical frequency of oscillation at omega naught. The phase is 0. Let us say phi is 0 here. At very low frequencies, just consider at very low frequencies, this is going to 0, this is going to become very huge. So, it is only the contribution due to this. This is minus uh, 1 over minus j okay, or plus j. That means, it will give you a phase shift of 90 degrees. At very low frequencies, it gives you a phase shift of 90 degrees. At very high frequencies, this goes, okay, this becomes dominant, this becomes negligible. So, at very high frequencies, this gives you a phase shift of minus 90 degrees. So, it is going to change in this manner. How it changes at this point is important. Now, you can see if this 90 degree is uh, lag, this 90 degree is lead. Uh, lead okay? That means, if it has to contribute to lead angle, then the frequency fixed by this network should be less than omega naught, which is 1 over C r. Okay? So, obviously, if an amplifier network is giving you lag, this frequency at which this is going to give lead is going to be less than omega naught. That is invariably the case. By how much it is going to be less depends upon the phase that you want, lead that you want to give to compensate for the phase lag that it has suffered through the active device. How much it is going to deviate here depends upon the slope here. Okay? That means, delta phi by delta omega is an important fact, because this is one curve, another curve may look like this, you know. Another curve may look like this. Ah, let us now see this curve. If delta phi by delta omega is very high, omega oscillation, actual oscillation will be very close to omega naught, irrespective of the phase lag contributed by my active device. This is an important aspect. That means, if this is a steep thing like this, then the frequency stability is good. If the passive network can give a steep thing, whereas in the case of passive RC network, this you can find out, okay, for this, phi is okay, minus tan inverse omega C r minus 1 by omega C r okay, uh, just divided by 3. Right? So, this is the phi. So, you can differentiate and find the maximum okay, at omega equal to 1 over C r and you will find that this quantity is not much for any passive network for that matter. Okay? Whether it is phase shift or V in bridge, you can always find out delta phi by delta omega, it is not going to be much. Whereas, in the case of a crystal or an LC oscillator, okay, this is going to be pretty high. It is directly proportional to Q and Q for the passive RC network okay, is never greater than half. That means, all the poles of this passive networks always lie on the negative real axis. You cannot get complex conjugate pair of poles and you can prove that Q cannot be greater than half. Okay? Whereas, in the case of LC network and crystal, Q can be pretty high. Complex conjugate pair of poles will occur okay? and these pair of poles can be very close to the imaginary axis. Okay? If they are very close to the imaginary axis, the resonance frequency is close to the actual frequency of oscillation and therefore, the phase shift variation 
is directly proportional to q. The higher the q, the steeper is the phase variation. Right? And that is why frequency stability of any oscillator directly depends upon the q quality factor of the PASI network that composes the frequency determining network. Okay? So, irrespective of the device that you use, in the case of crystal, apart from the phase varying so rapidly, even the magnitude of the impedance goes from 0 to infinity. So, this facilitates okay, the crystal being used in the loop okay, and invariably the crystal oscillator oscillating at the crystal frequency. Right? At any temperature or any situation, okay, extreme situation, the crystal still makes the oscillator okay, oscillate at the crystal frequency as long as what? The loop gain is greater than 1 in magnitude okay, at that. That has to be provided by the active device. At all temperatures, if this is satisfied, that is enough. Okay? But the phase part of it is automatically getting satisfied. Even the magnitude part is going to be somewhat getting satisfied because the impedance value itself changes in the case of a crystal. So, this is an important aspect of frequency stability. In order to understand what we have discussed so far in terms of frequency stability, let us try to solve this problem. This problem may also illustrate a typical situation of an amplifier used with LC oscillator or a crystal. Okay? The crystal can be connected here or in place of this 100K and the 100K can be put there. That kind of illustration we can do. Okay? Ultimately, at resonance, this LC network will act as a pure resistance 100K. Okay? And that frequency omega naught is going to be 1 over root L into C. L is 10 to power minus 3. This is the value of L. And C is okay, 10 to power minus 7, 100 nanofarads. Okay? So, that is C. So, that is going to be therefore equal to 10 to power 5 radians per second. That is the resonant frequency. Okay, which is equal to 15.9 kilohertz. That is the frequency of oscillation, I say, because at that frequency of resonance, this whole thing resonates and this will act as a 100K resistance and from here to here, the attenuation is half, 100K divided by 100K plus 100K, so half. So, output voltage will be same as input voltage if I make RB equal to R A equal to 1, R B by R A equal to 1, then the gain is going to be 2 from here. So, attenuation half. So, this is the condition for oscillation. This gain is 1 plus R B by R A and this into the effective attenuation here is nothing but Z divided by Z plus 100 K. This is the effective attenuation. This impedance we will call it as Z. And that is the loop gain from here to here 1 plus R B by R A into Z by Z plus 100 K is the loop gain if I break the loop here. Okay? So, this is the loop gain. So, this has to be, I close this, that means it is made equal to 1. So, 1 plus Rb by Ra into 1 by 1 plus okay, 100k, that is 10 to the power 5 into y. y is the inverse of z, 1 over z. Okay? That is nothing but 1 over 10 to the power 5. Okay, this is the resistance 1 over 10 to the power 5 conductance of that plus S C plus S C. C is really equal to 10 to the power minus 9 okay? plus 1 over S L. 
L is 10 to the power minus 3. So, that is the transfer function, okay, composite transfer function. So, we will take this inside where oh, this S c is 10 to the power minus 7, it is 100 nano farads, yes, thank you. So, we take this inside, this is going to be loop gain. Now, we would like to write it in general for a finite value of A. That means, 1 plus R B by R A gets modified, we have seen in the lecture that it will get modified as 1 by 1 plus 1 over loop gain, that is 1 over A into beta, beta being equal to R A by R A plus R B. So, this if A is infinity, this will be 0. Okay? Otherwise, this is the composite loop, loop gain. This has to be equal to 1 for oscillation to take place. Now, what it means is 1 plus R B by R A divided by 1 plus okay, A. A is 1 over a naught plus s by omega d. That is what say a naught by 1 plus s by omega d. That is how we have taken. So, a naught is in this case 10 to power 6 and omega d is 10. Okay. That into R a by R a plus R b. We can take the nominal value here, R A by R A plus R B is very close to half we have chosen, right? Because this is going to be still very close to half. So, we will take this nominal value in this case and this is going to be how much? Half. That means this factor will be 2. This is R A by R A plus R B is half, okay, nominally. It is not exactly now. Okay, it will be exactly half only when A is infinity. Right? Now, it will be less than half, so that the gain, overall gain is slightly greater than 2. So, to that extent, what value of RB by RA we should get, we will come to know from this expression. Right? So, this is an approximation okay, to a certain extent into 1 plus okay, 10 to the power 5 by 10 to the power 5, that is 1. Okay, plus s into 10 to the power minus 2 plus 1 over s into 10 to the power uh, 8. So, this is equal to 1 plus R B by R A. Once again, I say that R B by R A we have taken as equal to 1 okay, only in the non-ideality it will be close to 1, but will be different that value is going to fix by this. So, this is a factor of 2, that factor 2 you take out, this 2. Okay? So, it gets normalized now, 1 plus okay, s into 10 to the power minus 2 divided by 2, we have taken out 2 here, okay, this is nothing but 2, that 2 we have taken out. 10 to power 8 by 2 s. Yes. So, this is the expression. Now, you can see that this loop gain has to become equal to 1. Okay? Now, actually speaking, I think I removed this. Where is that? There is this factor, this into 1 plus Okay, what is that? Uh, 2 into 1 plus s by 10 divided by 10 to the power 6. So, now you can see that the phase shift is governed by this factor here. This is the active parameter phase shift. Okay? 
this is contributing to active parameter phase shift and that is going to be very little because there is a 10 to the power 6 factor coming here okay and therefore um, we can evaluate this now you can see that if this is not contributing to anything rb by ra should be made equal to 1 so that this two this two get cancelled so the loop gain becomes in magnitude equal to 1 and the frequency is determined by this factor this is j omega and this is minus j by omega so this factor equated will give you the frequency omega naught as 10 to power 5 radians this clear so we will see that it really depends upon a q factor coming here i have earlier in the case of filters okay explained to you how to normalize this whole thing right so that we get this as now i can uh, multiply this this is there is a 2s factor here this factor has to be made equal to 1 okay that means i multiply the whole thing by 2s by 10 to power 8 okay so that means this factor becomes equal to 1 okay this factor becomes equal to 2s by 10 to power 8 okay and this 2s means s square by 10 to power 8 okay is it correct 2s okay so 2 2 gets cancelled and 10 to power 8 here you get this as 10 to power minus 10 so this whole thing simplifies to in the denominator okay this is going to be neatly written as 1 plus rb by ra into 2s by 10 to power 8 divided by okay 2 1 plus 2s by 10 to power 8 okay plus s squared into 10 to power minus 10 and we said the coefficient of s squared here is going to be 1 over omega naught squared which is called the resonant frequency in the case of filters okay so you can see that 1 over omega naught squared is 10 to power minus 10 so 1 over omega naught squared is equal to 10 to power minus 10 or omega naught is equal to 10 to power 5 which we have got so we will write it as s squared by 10 to power 5 squared this is s squared by omega naught squared okay so here we have to have s by omega naught okay for normalizing s by omega naught means s by 10 to power 5 apart from that we will have 10 to power 3 and this factor 2 by 1000 is going to be written as 1 by 500 which we have earlier defined in our filters as q factor of the pole pole q if you remember so here the pole q is equal to 500 okay so pole q is 500 resonant frequency is 10 to power 5 and this is the normalization so this lc network has a pole q of 100 500 it's a pretty high value that means the variation in phase here okay with respect to frequency delta phi by delta omega in this case going is going to be around omega equal to omega naught is directly proportional to 500 it's a huge quantity right how do i really determine that right you can now find out the phase of this network okay phase variation here this contributes to a constant phase of 90 degree here right this only contributes to a phase okay this is going to be 1 by 500 into omega by 10 to the power 5 divided by 1 minus omega squared by 10 to the power 5 squared okay this is 
tan inverse of this is the phase contribution due to the pole imaginary part okay divided by the real part imaginary part put s is equal to j omega so omega by 10 to the power 5 into 1 over 500 that is the j omega part 1 without j omega real part is 1 minus omega squared by 10 to the power 10 1 minus omega squared by 10 to the power 10 so the real part divided by imaginary part tan inverse of that okay is the phase is this clear so now i am going to make an approximation here okay and show i want to establish only that at very close to omega equal to omega naught very close to omega equal to omega naught i would like to find out the uh, the uh, slope so instead of differentiating okay we will adopt this procedure at omega very close to omega naught okay omega minus omega naught i will take it as change from omega naught and omega plus omega naught okay is going to be twice omega naught this is the approximation at omega very close to omega naught omega minus omega naught is delta omega okay that change omega plus omega naught is twice omega naught if you do that this 1 minus x square okay is 1 plus x into 1 minus x so this denominator can be put as 1 minus omega by 10 to power 5 by 1 plus omega by 10 to power 5 right so this quantity is equal to 2 at omega very close to omega naught this quantity is equal to 2 this quantity is 1 minus okay omega plus omega naught or omega minus omega naught okay omega plus delta omega we can put omega plus delta omega or omega minus delta omega that means this is delta omega by 10 to power 5 right so this 10 to power 5 gets cancelled with this 10 to power 5 we get this phi as tan inverse okay omega by okay 1000 this is important you can see that the q factor will come in the denominator of this right 1 by 1000 okay omega by delta omega is this clear from this we can see that delta omega tending towards 0 that omega equal to omega naught okay this is going towards infinity that means phi is equal to pi by 2 that is the phase shift contributed by the pole phase shift contributed by the 0 remains constant at pi by 2 so overall phase shift is 0 okay so phase shift contributed by the pole alone is pi by 2 okay at omega equal to omega naught as omega changes from omega naught it keeps changing right we would like to know how much it is changing from pi by 2 okay so we will put this as okay delta theta okay plus pi by 2 it is going to change to some phi okay so this phi is going to be put as around pi by 2 so how much it is going to be different from okay pi by 2 is going to be given by this delta theta right the phase is going to change from pi by 2 at omega equal to omega naught it is pi by 2 okay so if i put that this is going to be delta theta plus pi by 2 so i take tan so tan pi by 2 plus delta theta equals okay omega divided by 1000 delta omega so delta theta being very small we are close to omega naught so this is equal to cot cotangent delta theta which is cos delta theta divided by sin delta theta delta theta is very small okay and therefore cos delta theta is 1 and sin delta theta is 
delta theta itself. Okay. So, from this expression you get delta theta the change in phase okay, for a change in frequency around omega naught omega naught okay, this is important equals okay, 1000 divided by omega. This is important in this 1000 q of 500 is there. Okay. So, it is really equal to 2 into 500 by omega naught because we are su substituting omega equal to omega naught. Okay. So, this is nothing but 2 q by omega naught. This is an important expression. For any such circuit with pole q equal to q, the change in phase with respect to frequency is equal to 2 q by omega naught. This can be done by met regular mathematics by finding out the okay, delta phi by delta omega straight away. Okay. Instead, by approximation you can do it this way also, 2 q by omega naught. So, this is very steep variation of frequency with omega naught. Now, if you consider the whole expression at omega equal to omega naught, this expression is going to contribute to 0 phase shift but there is going to be a phase lag contributed by this gain finite gain and therefore this is 1 plus 2 divided by 10 to power 6 so that 1 plus 2 by 10 to power 6 can be ignored okay so this can be ignored compared to this so it is 2 s yes by 10 to power 7 that is going to remain here so, if you put S is equal to omega j omega, this is going to contribute to a phase additional phase lag of at that frequency. The additional phase lag will be 2 omega naught by 10 to power 7. It is that being very small angle, you can say that tan inverse of that okay, is that angle itself. right? So, 2 omega naught by 10 to power 7 is the additional phase error. Okay? So, to that extent, this will have to contribute and that can be done by that changing very little from omega naught. Okay. So, this phase error can be compensated by this slope here. Okay. The slope is directly proportional to q and therefore, because q is very high, okay, the omega has to change very little from omega naught in order to accommodate this phase error. Is this clear? So, you will just equate this to this phase error and therefore, you will see that the actual phase frequency that is going to be different is going to be uh, different from omega naught by a factor which is determined by q, 1 over q of this factor. Right? So, this is the phase error. This has to be compensated for by delta phi by delta omega by delta omega changing accordingly from omega naught. Okay? delta phi by delta omega is 2 q by omega naught. Okay? That means, this into delta omega. So, delta phi is 2 omega naught divided by 10 to power 7. That is the phase error. Okay? And what should be the delta omega? That delta omega is given by okay, 2 omega naught square by 10 to power 7 divided by 2 q. So, you will see that q always comes in the denominator. Right? So, the delta omega which has to be different okay, now becomes very, very small. In this particular case, you can now substitute what? Omega naught and c 2 into 10 to power 10 divided by 10 to power 7 into 1000. 10 to power 3, is it? 1000, isn't it? So, this is the 2, uh, what is that? Radians per second. Omega naught is 10 to power 5 radians per second. So, it this much 
deviation can be accommodated by okay, frequency of oscillation changing only by 2 radians per second. So, we have solved the problem as well as made you understand what is frequency stability.